El Gamonitero brought Colombian slice and dice attacks in the fog on the 15k 10% finish today of Vuelta a España stage 18 from Salas to Alto del Gamonitero. The first time this climb has been used in the Vuelta a España, they repaved it just for the occasion, but it's a hard day before they even get to that climb. A climb of 10Ks, 8%, another 8Ks at 8%, 8Ks at 5% before the consistently steep finish to 1800 meters. And the breakaway formed pretty much without a fight straight out of the neutral zone with rulers, uh, satellite riders, potentially Puccia and Erviti for Ineos and Movistar as well as well as climbers for the stage, Stora already won two stages, and Micah, who won from an 80k solo the other day. They were being chased by, I'm going to turn this into Arashiro Appreciation Day, Bahrain victorious, Arashiro pacing hard in these valleys and false flats before these climbs, getting dropped on the first climb, coming back afterwards, and then pacing the valley again. They kept the break in pretty tight order, Bahrain victorious, whose plan seemed more to be make the overall stage quite hard, and shed the other teams with their domestiques so Hay could conserve his position on the final climb. And Stora, with the pressure behind from the peloton at 4.10, decided they needed to increase the pace in the breakaway, but no one went with him. So even when he crested that climb with 70 k's to go, he had a long valley ahead of him, which killed him, to be honest, before Gamonetera. Even though they got the Claudal climb beforehand, Movistar now with Oliveira and Erviti and Bahrain with Jan Tratnik, absolutely drilled this valley and shredded the gap to Stora, meaning that he just wouldn't be able to start that final climb with a big enough buffer. So perfect tactics from Movistar, honestly, getting one of their riders in the break up the road and then drilling it in that valley. They obviously wanted to win the stage today and it particularly suited Miguel Angel Lopez. On the Cordal climb, it was UAE who increased the pace for David de la Cruz, but then they ran out of teammates, so they kind of stopped, so the break went out again. And Roman Bardet marked Bizcara, maybe a little flick of the radio out of the ear there, with his teammate Stora up the road. Now, marking him's fine, but then he started pulling, and Stora took the KOM points and went into the KOM jersey ahead of him. So maybe Bardet wasn't particularly happy about that, but at the base of Monetero, I want to pause it here, talk about why it wasn't drilled from the bottom, why we didn't see attack straight away, because it's Rojas on the front. Now, I like Rojas, but he can't do 6.1 6 watts per kilo for half an hour, for even 10 minutes on this climb. He's only able to do his limit at 5.7, maybe 5.8 for not too long. Movistar don't have Valverde, Today. Ineos might have been able to pace with Sivakov, but he didn't look on great form today. Yates is not going to work for Bernal because Ineos are the new Movistar. Yamba Visma won yesterday and they're just defending and hey, this climb doesn't really suit him either. So the climb was done at a pretty steady pace. 5.7, 5.8 watts per kilo from Bahrain victorious with Caruso. Bardet finally got the call to just say, stop, what are you doing? Go, go back to the peloton. So other riders start to attack. David de la Cruz going for 10th on general classification. Quickly gained a minute on the pace of Damiano Caruso, who, as I said, was pacing behind for Bahrain Victorious because they had the most numbers. And that was also a threat because if someone else attacked this early, I guess, they had the appearance of Pools and Mater who could mark those moves. But David de la Cruz quickly bridged across to Stora, which indicated that the pace from Caruso wasn't great and Stora was cooked, went solo and was looking. David de la Cruz looked really good on this climb, frankly. Still finished, I think, fifth on this stage. But his presence up the road with a minute gap triggered into Marche, who were also vying for top 10 on GC to pace with Jan Hurt. Not just pace, they ripped this GC group to pieces. Now, I'm sorry, I wish I had more footage because I would I wanted to do a big song and dance about Intermarche for Louis Mankies. They were incredible today and they brought it to just the main contenders plus Coos and Maida for their man before Egan Bernal counted with 4.8 Ks to go with De La Cruz having a 41 second gap. Bernal immediately marked by Roglic again. Roglic marking Bernal two days in a row. I guess it is quite far out. But then when Enric Mas and Miguel Angel Lopez eventually get to his wheel, Bernal kind of continues the action, I guess, with Haig behind. He's going for fourth. And Maders, you can see here, pacing Haig with Louis Mankies and Adam Yates, not on a great day behind. Maybe Bernal wanted to see if he could push through like Roglic 30-second burst and then see if he could put him under pressure that way. But Bernal eventually stops his action before being countered with three points. 9Ks to go by Ataka de Superman Lopez, one of the best climbers in the world. He immediately gets separation from Coos and Roglic doesn't mark his move and 
Coos just puts it on 5.8 watts per kilo. You can see it in Coos Strava file. Lopez doing over 6 watts per kilo goes straight past David de la Cruz. It ain't high altitude, but the fog will have to do. Riding away with this stage win, the gap goes up to 34 seconds with Coos pacing. Hagen made a come back to this group of Bernard Roglic and Mas. In fact, we don't know how Mas' legs were today, whether he could have attacked, tactically did the right thing, just sitting on Roglic, who eventually brings this gap down pretty quickly from 36 seconds to 29 seconds but that initial separation for Lopez was too much with a 24 second gap with 1k to go this stage was already a wrap with Roglic who you can say was looking uncomfortable and yes he lost 14 seconds on the stage but he didn't have to mark Lopez he still dropped Egan Bernal and Mas at the end and if there is something that is his kryptonite I guess it is a 15k 10% stage like this where he still is about five to six kilos heavier than Miguel Angel Lopez same applies to Jack Haig, who was just trying to defend his fourth position against Bernal with Lopez riding further away from him in third position. Haig even heavier at, say, 70 kilos. And this reminded me a lot of the Col de la Lowe stage win in the Tour de France last year. And we remember so much of Lopez Tour de France last year by that Planche de Belfi horrendous time trial where he lost six minutes. But otherwise, he is a very good general classification rider in the Grand Tours. And when you have a steep, long climb and particularly with high altitude, he's almost unbeatable on his day. He's good enough and should be, I believe, sent to a different Grand Tour to Enric Mars next year. Depending on the parkour of the various Grand Tours, Molestar, I think, should split their resources a bit more evenly across the three rather than overly stacking the Tour and the Vuelta a Spania. And of course, races like Tour de Suisse suit Lopez perhaps a little bit more than the traditional Paris-Nice. But Rolich was doing such a good job eating into this gap, he was actually putting eggs Egan Bernal under pressure, who is losing the wheel of Enric Mas. But I want to hear your thoughts down below. Do you think Enric Mas was on the limit here, or do you think he was being a good teammate and actually could have attacked Roglic at some point if he didn't have Miguel Angel Lopez up the road? But for Movistar, who have had a better year this year than last year, but still only won two World Tour races this year, the Dauphiné stage with Valverde and Roman Di Solo with Marc Soler, no Grand Tour stage wins up to this point until Miguel Angel Lopez takes out the Queen stage of the Vuelta a España. He gave a very heartwarming interview afterwards naming Valverde, Jacobs, all the team winning on Alto del Gamonitero for the first time in the first occasion of its use in the Vuelta a España and shores up his third position against Jack Haig. Roglic coming over the line 14 seconds later, actually putting six seconds into Mars and eight into Bernal on the road with Jack Haig losing 36 seconds to Egan Bernal. Gino Mater did a magnificent job once again today, but that wasn't actually enough for Bernal to leapfrog him into fourth on GC. Rolich now has a 2.30 advantage, 2.53 on Lopez, who's knocking on the door of Enric Mars second place. So it still is reasonably tight between third and fifth, and we've got a hard stage 20 to come, as well as that all-important time trial in stage 21. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. It's a shame Movistar got hand with so many injuries and abandons this well to Jacobs, Valverde and Carlos Verona this morning it would have been interesting to see what they could have done on this climb with a full roster in terms of trying to turn the general classification upside down but until tomorrow's stage 19 recap ciao